everyone! So today's class I am super excited for. We're going to be sketching Elsa. And I did a previous sketching class like this and if you're you know familiar with my channel you know we normally stick with nail art. You might be like a sketching class. Why? Because sketching is the base of anything art related and nail art is by all counts art. So if you want to do something amazing for your art, whether it be nail art, canvas art, sculptures, whatever you're going to do, if you can get a good basis and really understand sketching, it's going to improve in all aspects. And it's something that hopefully if you are art minded, you find to be very relaxing and just a pleasant activity. So that's part of the reason why it's so exciting for me that we get to sketch tonight is because I love to do it. So we're going to be sketching also, like I said, um, this is the second time I've done this. The first one was a Mickey Mouse sketch that we did together, and it was a different technique. So the Elsa we're going to be sketching, I have printed off on here. If you want to be part of my live classes and follow along with me a little easier, if you send me an email to hotpinkzebrapolish at hotmail.com, uh, in a, ahead of time for the classes, I will send you the image like this and I will send it to you so that you can also have it printed off as well as any supplies you might need. And I'll go over the supplies we need for tonight's class as well if you didn't get the email. But otherwise, if you do want to be part of them, like, you know, you just follow along, be prepared, bring all your supplies with you, then it's good to just have that email so you know what you're looking for. Otherwise, for this class, we're going to be sketching Elsa and it's printed off um, for a specific purpose. I printed it this time. Usually I just rely on my phone for my reference photos, but we want it printed today. And it's because we're going to be sketching it in a different manner than we did our Mickey Mouse. And if you didn't follow along with the Mickey Mouse class, I have a link to it in the description box below. And it's a completely different technique. What we're doing today is a much different technique than we did for the Mickey Mouse. And I personally use both forms of thought and both methods when I'm sketching. And it depends on what I'm sketching. For something that I find to be for myself an easier thing to sketch, something more reliable, I prefer the Mickey Mouse method. For a character or a person that I find to be a little bit more difficult, a little bit more precise, where it really needs to have that no room for error precision, then I find tonight's technique the easiest. The other big difference between Elsa versus Mickey Mouse is Mickey Mouse is an old cartoon. He's got lots of those really bold outlines. You have no question where his nose is because it's black, it's solid, it's defined. If you look at a picture of Elsa, that's not the case. Her nose is defined by subtle shading. It isn't a sharp line. It's not, yep, this is her nose, that's where it is. It's more of a place it and then almost try to find it and fill it in and bring it to life. So it's a different thought process. It's a different technique. So we're going to be doing things, obviously, a little differently to accommodate. I hope that both of these classes, if you missed the Mickey Mouse one, go back and check that out because like I said, it's kind of a different process and it can really be beneficial and really helpful and tonight's class. I hope you find both of them to be super enjoyable. Hopefully one technique or the other. If you did follow along with the Mickey Mouse class and you're like, this is just not working for me, maybe this one will be the way that for you, it just works out easier. And either technique, either uh, method of sketching can work for the outline versus no outline styling. This technique that we're doing today is the one that I always use when I am drawing a certain very specific person or painting a very certain realistic person or animal. When I've done um, pet portraits, I use this technique. And when I've done people portraits, I use this technique because like I said, it really allows for that no questions asked precision. So we're going to just go through our little reference, our little uh, supplies list. Need your reference photo. I have mine all printed off here as you can see. And then as far as the sketch paper, I'm just gonna use the bottom portion of the paper. I don't like to waste paper, so we're just gonna be reusing this one. And then you're going to need a pencil and an eraser. So the eraser on mine is just the one that's built into the pencil. It's a pretty good one and I don't really plan to erase, so I'm not too worried about the eraser. You're also going to need a ruler. It doesn't matter if your ruler is in inches or centimeters, whatever it is. It can even just be like a stick with a line on it, just as long as you know um, that you can get even measurements going across. So it doesn't have to be like an actual ruler either. Um, you do want a straight edge though. And then I also have, I have a scissors with me. The only reason I have a scissors is because I am gonna reuse the paper, the one paper. I'm gonna cut it in half later just so that my Elsa reference photo and my sketch can be separated. Otherwise, the last, final, most important thing you need for this class, as well as any of my other classes, is a smiling face. For one thing, I've never had any issues with any sort of um, just rude comments or anything unpleasant in the comment section or in the um, anywhere on my videos. I usually have really nice people, but you know, smiling face, happy thoughts, 
pleasant work environment for all of us is always appreciated. And it's also going to make it so that everything I say, everything we do tonight is just a little bit more fun for you as it is for me. If you're in a good mood, your sketches are going to turn out better. If you're in a, oh, I don't feel like doing this kind of a mood, it's not going to go well. So smile, have a good time, get something good to drink. I'm drinking um, strawberry tea. It's delicious. So just, you know, have a good time with it. Let's have a great night. So here is my Elsa. I'll get rid of that big square in the middle of the screen. So I have my reference photo as far as like the digital image next to my, go away. There we go. Okay. So I have um, that. If I'll probably get rid of it for at least a little while. We'll get rid of that for right now. Okay. So we have our Elsa here. Zoom this out. Goodness, that was close. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our picture and we're going to take our ruler and we're going to set it across the paper. Don't put it, um, don't measure it against the picture. So we know that our paper, oh, I know my paper is eight and a half inches, eight and a half inches across. So I'm going to take and I'm going to make marks at the one, we're going to make marks every half an inch. So I'm going to start, and I'm just going to make a mark every half an inch. And that's where we're going to start this process is by making marks off the photo. So don't do it on the photo. Do it just above and below. <coughs> so there's our first row lines. Now we're going to go to the top of our page and we're going to do it again. So just line that up nice and straight and then a half an inch. And one thing you want to do when you're making these marks is if you start on the right side of the paper, Start or huh, the right side of the paper, start on the right side of the paper. If you start on the left side of the paper with your little lines, you're going to want to start there again because every once in a while things just get a little bit off and you don't want to have these lines, these little marks in the wrong spots. Okay, so we've got them all done. Now, obviously, these ones off to the side, I probably didn't even have to make them because we're not going to need them. But we're going to then, I'm going to take and I'm going to zoom this out a little bit more so you guys can see even more of what we're doing. Okay, we're going to line this up. So I'm going to take, I'm going to find two of the dots that go together. I'm going to hold my ruler up to them. I'm going to draw a line. Just hold it up just like that. I'm going to draw a nice line. Not a very dark line, but a line. So it goes all the way down. And we're going to go through and we're going to do the same thing for the next line. Just going all the way across. So now as we're doing these lines, we want to make sure that the line is visible across the image. So if you look, you want to make sure you can see those lines. They, again, don't have to be super dark, but you do have to know exactly where they hit so that there is no question about them. So this technique is one that I've noticed. I don't actually remember having them in like coloring books when I was little, where you had to replicate the sketch. They probably were there. I probably just ignored them. Um, but I have noticed them in my daughter's coloring books where they'll have an image that's got the grid going across it and then either a blank or a partially filled in grid. And it says for you to fill in the blanks. That is what we're doing tonight. We're making our own grid. We're putting a grid across our photo and we're going to just use it as a map to do the image again, to repeat it. So now that we've got our first set of lines here, there we go. Now we got to do the same thing on the side. So I'm going to put, my ruler at the top of my paper and we're going to make a mark every half inch going down. So whenever I sketch this way, like I said, I do this for something where I need the precision and the, you know, no questions. This is exactly how it looks. Kind of a, a thing. When you're doing this and you're trying to do it for a nail, obviously you aren't going to go through and make a measured out grid on your nail. What you can do is you can use something that is measured. So you can make a line immediately down the middle of your, of your image. So if you just had this middle line, and you know that that's what you want to be at the middle of the nail, you can imagine, you can visualize that line down the middle of the nail. And that can help you place, say, her eyes. Okay, so you know exactly where the eyes are in comparison to that middle line. And then you can do a second line going straight down. And you can maybe break the image up into fours into four quadrants. And even that, just that little bit might be enough that it, it helps you. 
Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be like, no, that's not enough. It really meet all the lines. But the more you sketch in whatever method it is that you're sketching, the better off all of your art will be, which I know I'm repeating and repeating myself because I said essentially that exact same thing at the beginning of the video, but I will probably say it again because it is so true and it's something that I think people forget. It's kind of like just going back to basics and sometimes you just have to do that. I had two clients today that both had French tips on their nails and I loved it because it was one of those kind of back to basics get to remind myself of you know what what some of the basics of nail art are so same thing with this we're going back to basics now I'm just going to count how many of these lines on the side I need so that I can put them down below one two three four five six seven eight okay we have a small space and then we're going to put in our eight lines so I'm going to make sure at the bottom of the paper I'm putting this at the six mine is a an inch measurement at the six inch mark so that I know where that is and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go to this line. Again, line up the six inch mark with the bottom of my paper so that I know that when I'm making these lines, they're in the same spot. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can make our lines going across. This is the part that is somewhat tedious or really tedious. Oops, that line was crooked. That's okay. Um, you can get grid paper that is already, already has this grid going across it if this process is just not fun for you. I kind of like with the whole French tip thing, I enjoy it. It's this exciting start of a new project, especially if I'm doing something, like I said, if it's a a pet portrait or a people portrait or something, it's exciting to get to make this grid because I know that something amazing is going to happen on top of it. Right now it's a grid, it's unsuspecting, you never know what's going to happen and then, you know, whether it's 20 minutes later, two hours later, six days later, however long it takes to complete it, eight months later, you have something beautiful and it just started out as a grid. So now that we've got it this far, we're going to take, I'm just going to cut these apart so that I don't have to have it so far away. And you can see both. So one other thing that might help that I've done too, is especially if you're doing a really big grid, is I will mark my rows and columns. So this will be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, um, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then when I go to my paper, I'm going to make those same notations, those same numbers on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now that we've got that, now you can look at this and you can say, okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with Elsa's eye. Now I'm also going to get out my phone for my reference photo because this image isn't nearly as high quality of a photo as the actual digital image. I can zoom this in. I can get so much more knowledge out of this photo that's on my phone versus on this photo that I printed out. So I like to use both. Plus, not that we really need the color, we're just using a pencil but the color and the definition on this would be so much more helpful if you're painting it and you want to be in color. So I do recommend having both of them at your disposal. All right, so we've got our little sketch here. We're gonna start, like I said, with Elsa's eye. Now, if you didn't have these numbers, it might be hard to figure out which square within this grid is the one that you're going to need for her eye. So we're gonna start out with this eye and it's in five, I'm going to go to five by four. So you can go here, five by four. This is where her eye is. Now we can go back to our grid and you can look at it. And her eye starts just right above the line and it goes down to about there. Now within this, I just made a mistake already. Um, I made the line 
where it started to bend. It actually just goes straight down, kind of like that, and then it bends right on, right past that line, like that. So we've got our first line. Then you can look in this part of it. Let's zoom it in. This crisscross of Elsa's eye is right past here. So then this part comes out like this, comes down, and then it all is going to come down like this and it's going to meet. So there's her first eye. Now we're also going to sketch this part in, the area of her eye that's shadowed or that's shaded in. So we're going to bring that up and then we're going to get bring it across. Now the whole time we're going back through and we're looking at how it is and where things go on our little grid. Okay, so then we can do Elsa's eyebrow. So her eyebrow, we're going to start it on this line. So that's going to be this line, just about halfway up on the grid. And then it goes across and it starts to turn right about there. We're going to do her little eyebrow, fill in those brow hairs. I'm going to give it a little bit more definition to those brow hairs. Just like that. I'm also going to give this line here just a little bit more depth. Like that. Now we can go through, we can do her iris. So we're going to go through and do this process just like this the whole time. So we got to look at it, figure out where it is. First line, second line. I wish I had a stronger pencil than just this one, but this is this is okay. And then we can give her some eyelashes. Okay, so we have Elsa's eye done. So now after you have that first eye done, then you can find a different, you know, defining portion. These eyes are probably going to be the most uh, time consuming. So we're going to look at our next thing. Her next eye starts in four by five. So here we've got four by five. So it's gonna be in this one, it's gonna be on this line. And then as we're looking at this, I'm just gonna make here, it's a little more. The eye in this quadrant is in the upper, the upper half of the square. So we're gonna start it here. This is gonna be our line for her eye. And it's gonna go right about to the middle like this and then it goes in just a little bit on that side it kind of curves down then it goes straight across and it comes down and then so now that we have that basic shape done when you're just sketching this it you wouldn't think that that's where the eyes would be placed now when we get done it'll it'll look right but just you know from the beginning one eye is at a pretty heavy slant, one eye goes straight across. That might not be something that you would automatically paint, but as you're sketching it this way, it's something you might see. So maybe these sketches, even if it's not something that you would normally, you know, just do, you know, go through and sketch Elsa in this way, maybe it's something that if you're doing, especially a character that you haven't done very often before, or you're new to sculpting or drawing characters, sculpting or drawing, I mean, because the same the same way of looking at an image and the same way of just getting better at understanding the way shapes play off of each other, I would say is, it doesn't matter if you're sculpting or if you're drawing, it's the same necessary thought that goes into it. But you might start to see some of those things that will become really important information to you later on, as far as just even the fact that one eye is slanted and one eye isn't. You look at it. I'm looking at where her iris sits, I'm looking where her pupil sits. Okay, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to add these eyelashes off to the side here. Again, my pencil's not, not the strongest. We can go and at the end to any lines that you want to have a little bit more definition on with a pen. Okay, 
So now we have the second eye. Now let's do that eyebrow. So this eyebrow, we're gonna bring our photo back up. If you look at it, it's, you see this little, like middle of the pupil is directly where her eyebrow, where the eyebrow starts. So you're gonna find the middle of her pupil, bring it up, and then that is where her eyebrow is gonna start. And the eyebrows start at the same line going across this way. So by finding that cross point, you know exactly where to place this eyebrow. So we go up the middle of the pupil, and across, that's where her eyebrow starts. And it does go up. It goes up. And then right about, there's this line, it kind of follows that. So we're going to just take it and follow that across. Just like so. Okay, so now that we have those done, then we can take and we can look at the way her cheek goes. So this is quadrant three by five. The cheek goes almost down to that corner. So we have this corner, the cheek starts here and it comes down almost into the corner. So then we look at three by six. It's just a little nick in the corner, just a little nick in the corner. Then we're gonna look at four by six. Starts there, comes around almost to the bottom. So we're gonna take that line and it goes in and then it comes out. Okay, then we're gonna look at five, five by six. It's the rounding of the chin and then it comes up. So we've got the rounding of the chin and it comes up almost to the midway point. Six by six goes from midpoint to midpoint just about. Okay. We're gonna look at six by five. Comes up to about the midpoint, curls up to about this way, and it juts out. So we're gonna bring it up, and then it juts out for her ear. Now we're gonna continue this line for her ear, so it's gonna be seven by five. We're gonna bring the ear up. It's pretty much an even little corner that we're taking off there. Now we're going to look at seven by four, which is this square, and the ear kind of comes up. It does get cut off by her hair, so we're just going to bring it up a little bit, and we're going to let the hair come in and define that in a minute. So now looking at the one that's got the corner of her eye, which is right here, you can see that her hair comes across in that corner, and then it, it comes down in front of her ear. Right about like that, and then it comes across and up like this. So now we're adding in some of that hair there. And then we're going to go through, and my Elsa, my eyes on Elsa are bigger than what her eyes are. I'm going to try to bring some of that in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to try to do some of this hairline. So this is four by three, so four by three, it's this square. We're going to start here, it's about right there, okay, it's going to come down, and then it's going to come across like that, and then in the next square, we're going to just go down gently to the side, and then in the next square, it's going to just scoop like this. We're going to add this little bit of wisp. So that goes here, comes up, and then it comes down in that one. Okay, now we're going to figure out the top of our hairline. So that's going to be one by four, one by four, which is here. We've got just kind of this wispy start of her hairline. So that's something to look at. Look at how much space that you wouldn't necessarily think would be, I can't see it, above her hairline. Got a pretty big gap there. 
And then we're going to go to the next square over. We have that corner. Next square over is where this all is. I'm going to bring it down. And then it kind of flares out like this. Okay, the next square is where it tucks in. So we're going to bring it down, tuck it in. And then that comes in right on this 3-4 line. And that's getting closer to her face line too. So in that, in this square, we've got this little bit of the corner of her hairline on the other side. So we're going to add that in. And then we're going to bring it down like that. So then we can go through and we can add this part of her hairline. And bring that down too. Add some of those different little hair details. So now that we have it done that far, we can add some more in this area. So in two by four here, she's got a pretty big, very defined sort of a section to part it off in her hair. And this comes up again, this side comes down. down here. It's got a little bit too tall. Yeah, so that wasn't going to be my eraser. So the whole time you're doing this, like I said, have fun with it. Don't worry too much about it. And as you're sketching it, just kind of Look at it as a puzzle that you're figuring out as you go. So now we're going to go seven by three. Okay, so in seven by three, this is where the ends of this are coming up. I'm kind of going back in, going in with all of, all of that fluffy blonde hair. And then in this one, we just have little bits that come through, just come up. And we have her ear. So then this also comes down and across her ear and sort of just scoops up like so. And then she has a little bit more hair down the side. Okay, so now we've got pretty much Elsa's head and hair done. And it really hasn't, we haven't been working that long on it. So now we're going to look at her nose, her nose placement. Her nose is between, it's, we're going to say four, we're going to start at four and six. So here's four and here's six. Here's where her nose is going to go. There isn't much, much space there for her nose. I mean, it's a small little nose. So we're going to be adding... The nostril right there, a little line, and then we're going to add a second line, and then a second kind of nostril line. And that's all we're going to do for her nose right now. Because like I said, she's a little bit less defined than say our Mickey Mouse because just of the styling, because she's more of a realistic looking person as far as the way the shading goes. Now for her mouth, we're going to start on the four and six again, the same, the same place about right in the middle of those lines. And it's going to just come down and then like that. And then we're just going to bring it up and when we bring it up, it's going to touch this corner. So it's going to be on the same height as her nose. So that's in the five by six. So five, by six, right about in the middle, it's going to come up and touch. Otherwise, it's going to scoop down and scoop across. There we've got her lips. 
Now we're going to add her neck. So her neck is in the 5 by 6 too. There's just that little line that's going to come down. And then in the next one, it's going to come down to right about there. There's her neck to start with. And we've got her shoulder coming across. So it's going to go across until about this point where it swoops down. I'm not as worried about adding in her clothing detail. If you were to actually want to draw her all the way, you'd want to do all of this, but I'm less concerned. I mainly want to focus on, on Elsa's face. So now we're going to go back up here to her hair. So that's six, or the rest of her neck, six by six. We're going to add in the rest of her neck, which isn't much because her hair does come down. We are going to add in the next shoulder after that, which is going to be seven by eight. We're going to just add in what we can of her shoulder. It's not in the way of the braid. Okay, so now that we have that done, now we can go back and we can add in this braid. So there's this line that comes down from her ear. And it kind of comes down like this. And there's a line that goes right here. This is kind of a, a big one. I'm looking for the bigger lines of her braid, the more important ones. So we just did the start of this one coming down. It didn't go, didn't bring it all the way down. It goes down to about right there. Then this next one starts here, it goes up, and then it does go down into that one. Like that, and then there's this one that connects these. Right there. Now after we do that one, I'm going to try to get this, you know, let's look at our picture, because this braid, just because of how blonde it is, my printer did not print it very well. We're going to add our little, our little snowflake. Right here, right there. Okay, so now we're going to do this next section. So this part of her hair is going to come down, right about like that, and then there's this one right there that we're going to get in there. Sometimes it helps to actually draw on your picture so that you can see these lines. And you can easier tell where they are. Because especially, like I said, it's so pale blonde, it's kind of hard to see what we're even looking at for the braid. But if we have like a nice sharp line, it's just a little bit easier to know what we're looking at. Okay, this one's going to come down to about there. And the one on this side is going to start here, go across, like that. This is going to come down. The next one is going to scoop the corner like this, and then it's going to and up and then all the way over to there. That touch, and there's going to be a corner. And then from there, it'll come down to there. Go past that line. Then there's another really big section of hair. Comes up and over and down. And then those bottom parts. So now that we have all of her outlines done, as you can see, we have little little lines for our whole Elsa. Then we can go back through and we can do some of the shading. So now that we have the outlines done, this is where that little sketch isn't nearly as helpful to us anymore. So I'm gonna go back to where we have our tabletop reference. So I'm gonna zoom it out just a little bit. Now, if you want to, you can call this a day. You can be like, you know what? I've sketched, I've done my sketching, I need a break. <laughs> or we can add a little bit of shading to it. I'm gonna go through and add a little bit of shading to it. Not much, just with really soft strokes. I'm just gonna go through and add a little bit of marks here and there to bring in some of the shading. So the first places that I see that need to be shaded in are her nose and like to really give it, give her cheeks because you need to make sure that she has her cheese. So 
So we've got the line, this line for her nose. This line will be the start of where her cheek is. She'll need some shaving of her jawline. And then she'll need some shading on this cheek. So mostly coming down on the side of her face here. A little bit across there. A little bit under her eye. A little bit of shading under her mouth. And fill in her lips. Like that. And you can obviously take this as far as you want or keep it as simple as you want. But I like to shade. So we're going to add a little bit more here and there, just right around her hairline. If you have the proper tools, this will be a simpler endeavor. If you have good sketching pencils that you're using instead of just a, you're using a note-taking pencil. Add a little bit more to her nose. Got that, we're gonna add just some more to her hair. Just to really make sure that it looks Nice and hairy. Same thing with the braid. When you're doing a braid, you always want to darken the part of it that goes underneath. There's the section of the braid that go that comes from underneath and goes underneath. And so you want to make sure you darken that and then brighten up the area that's on top. All right. And then whenever you're done with this, the last thing you're going to want to do, which hopefully this doesn't come as a surprise to anybody, when you're happy with it and you're like, yeah, I'm, you know, I did good. I sketched myself and Elsa, as you are going to sign your work. All right, so whoever sketched Elsa with me, please, I would love to see how they turned out. I would love to see what it looks like. Send me a photo of it. Doing these little classes with all of you is always just my favorite, you know, little kind of relaxing night for me. I, like I said, I'd love to see how they turn out, whether they're perfect in your eyes or not, whether they're horrible or a masterpiece. You know, there's always, I'd always love to see them. I know that I had fun with this. Like I said, I love to sketch. They're so much fun just to take a minute and, and relax. You get to have a pencil and a paper and you get to forget about everything else and just spend time with working on your skill set. There's nothing better. It's investing in yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this class. Like I said before, if you do not have my live class where you're signed up ahead of time where you can um, see the, like you'd get this picture sent to you so that you'd have it, um, send an email to hot pink zebra polish. So a little tag in the corner, in that corner, oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> in that corner of the screen, hot pink zebra polish at hotmail.com is where you just send me an email saying, I'd love to join your email list for the live classes. Then I'll put you on the list. And then next month, actually not next month, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, but for the next class, you would get some information ahead of time. I'm going to be taking off a couple months from doing live classes. I have a very busy schedule coming up in my regular, in my other life. So I'm going to be doing my next live class in June of 2020. So there's going to be just a few months that we're taking off. I think, you know, I've been doing these for, it's since January of 2021 without a break and the past few months I've been falling behind I've been really struggling to get them put together just because I have gotten so much other work 
put at me. So we're gonna take just a little break. I'm gonna get caught up and we're going to be back in June. So definitely towards the end of May, look out for a poll on my YouTube channel for the topic of June's class. So I hope you look for that and vote. The votes do decide what the class is. That's how we decide to sketch Elsa this month. So if you have any ideas that you want for a live class, let me know and I can get them in a poll. Otherwise, I will see you guys all in June for this class.